All right, so today we're going to look at some of the internal web pages of the PLC next and do a firmware update. So all of the PLCs come on 192.168.1.10. So let's go ahead and make sure I can get there. So we're going to open up our network settings. We're going to change the adapter options. X3 is the current uh, NIC that I'm using. And then we're just going to make sure that the one subnet is in here. So currently I'm on the four, but if we go to advanced, we'll see that I have both the four and the one subnet on this interface card. Um, so we're just going to leave that alone. And now that we know we're good, we're going to go ahead and pull up the PLC web page. So 192.168.1.10. That's going to bring you to this, which is the PLC next internal web page. We want to configure it, so we're going to go ahead and hit Easy Configuration. Now, the username is always admin, all lowercase. The password itself is written on the unit up here. So each PLC from the factory gets a different password. Uh, for security reasons, they don't want every PLC to go out with the password as password. Um, so they go ahead and do a randomly generated password for you that you can change later on. So once we get that in, um, now we are inside the PLC. So um, upper right, you're going to find things like hardware, uh, what firmware version we're on. We're on a little bit older of firmware. We're on 2022.0.4 LTS. Um, we're going to bring it up to 2023. Uh, dot zero dot seven LTS for today. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to pull up the web page of the controller on the Phoenix website. We're going to go to firmware. We are going to select hardware version five. And then I'm going to do 2023.0.7 LTS. Now I've already downloaded this. Um, so let's go ahead and find it. So documents, downloads, AXCF firmware. We're going to extract all just to the same place for this example. Um, you would want to save it with whatever project you're currently working on. So now that we've got it unzipped, we are going to go back to the home page. We're going to go down to firmware update. We're going to go to browse. Uh, we know it's going to be put in the downloads folder because that's where I had it. And then we're going to select this RAUCB file. Um, once it's confirmed at the file, then we're going to do start update. Now this does take a few minutes depending on your connection speed, uh, how you're connected, uh, various firmware versions. Um, so we're going to let this finish and then we'll pick up here in a minute with the new firmware. All right, so we now have the 2023.0.7 LTS firmware in here. Let's just take a quick look around in here. So the overview, uh, this is gonna be your general data. This is where you're gonna find your serial number, uh, your firmware version if it's not found up there, which it always is. Um, we also have the cockpit. This is a new feature for 2023 uh, LTS. So this is actually the same screen that you would see inside the PLC Next Engineer. Uh, this is where you could reboot the PLC, uh, you could reset the controller factory defaults, uh, you can stop the controller and then execute a hot, warm, or cold start. And it also gives you things like utilization, CPU loads, um, and how large your program is. Uh, under the diagnostics, uh, local bus is going to be any I.O. cards that we have uh, attached. We currently don't have any, but we have a couple, but we haven't put them in the software yet. Um, configuration, uh, we're also going to look into the network. So this is where you could actually change um, the PLC's IP address. I will eventually do that. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it through here or through the software, um, but it is entirely possible to do it just through here. So you could change this. Um, usually internally, I play on the four subnet, so we could change this to something like four. And dot 10 I know is already used, so we'll dial dot 20. And then I know that I'll have to change the default gateway to 4.1 uh, because that's the way my M guard is currently configured, providing internet 
to this PLC. So let's actually just go ahead and change it. So we're going to hit apply and reboot. Um, the controller's going to do its thing. It's going to um, power down and then reboot itself. Um, this can take about 30 seconds to happen. So we'll come back here in a second and pick it back up. All right, so we're back. Um, if you'll notice, our IP address is now 4.20, and I did have to get to it using 4.20 up in the, uh, the search bar. Um, Profi Cloud Services. Um, if you guys are looking for any sort of data collection service and display service, the Profi Cloud is a great start. You get 20 tags for free, and registering it is as simple as putting this UUID into the Profi Cloud Manager. Um, we'll go into that in another video because there are a few settings here we need to enable, but it is a very nice feature. Um, date and time. Uh, the PLC can actually reach out to time servers um, and update its time in UTC. So we're actually going to make it active. And then the server host name, uh, you just Google NIST. Um, you'll end up with um, this page. Any one of these should work. We just go ahead and copy this. We'll bring it over here. Uh, we'll paste. I have to remove the space at the end. Then we're just going to say every between every nine hours and 36 hours, um, go out and try to get the UTC time. And we're going to apply. So now, uh, in the next few hours, the PLC should reach out as long as it can get to the internet and grab a new UTC time. Um, let's look, security is sort of the last thing we're gonna go over, uh, user authentication. Um, this is where you're going to change the password if you wanted to. So we could go to set password. Um, the new password, I'm actually gonna make it password, as funny as it is, just so I can remember it. And I'll have to continue to type that random eight digit number. So once we hit save, um, that new password is now saved. And then when you go to log into the PLC, whether from the software or the web management, um, you would go ahead and use that new password password. Um, this is where you can also add other users um, and then assign them different roles. Um, as the admin, um, you are the admin, so you can do everything but you can limit people to certain HMI levels. Um, you could only be an HMI viewer. Um, so there, there's a whole bunch of users that you can set up in here uh, for security purposes. Um, so that's basically everything inside of the PLC Next itself. Um, we're gonna jump right into some programming here in the next video.